What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com, bringing home the bacon MLB DFS video. It is for Wednesday. It is October 2nd. We are back with four more playoff games today. We are going to see if some teams are eliminated, if we're going to see a game three. We're going to see it all. It is three team, or it is the best of three for the wild card. You know, we had more wild cards than last year was the first year, but we are back. You guys loved yesterday's video. We're going to do things a little bit differently today. See if you like it this way. This is the old way of what we used to do. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to go through all four games. We're going to look at them. We're going to break it down on both sides. We're going to look at the teams. We're going to look at the pitchers. We're going to look at everything. We are going to use our sponsor, outlier.bet. So if you have not already signed up, the link is down below. If It's sports betting and it helps with DFS as well. And I'm going to show you exactly what it is. So if you're newer to the channel, maybe you haven't seen it before. Maybe you've never heard it before. But anyone that uses our link to sign up for a free trial right down below today, show us that you used it by emailing us, dfshelp1 at gmail.com. And we're going to give you a free week of FTA+. Plus. So you will get this week's NFL, PGA, MLB, MMA, NASCAR, everything that we offer for a week. Now, I'll sweeten the deal. If you guys use that free trial, you get seven day free trial. You go through outlier.bet right here. Go to pricing. If you sign up for the $20 package after a seven day free trial, you want the $20 package. With our link, we will give you a free month on top of it. So you technically will get outlier for one month and five weeks of FTA plus. If you sign up for the pro package, $130, we're gonna give you three months free of FTA Plus. So check it out. Go ahead, check everything out on Outlier. And I'm gonna show you what we're, how we're gonna use it today. And if you're new to the channel, this will be new to you, but if, you are, if you've been around, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So you've got the insights, you've got the MLB insights, you can see that. <clears throat> you can see all of that, you can see like the, and all of these insights, they they drop into our Discord. So if you have not checked out the Discord, make sure you check it down below. We give out plays there. We talk to each other and we go we go back and forth. <clears throat> now, what we're going to use is the games. So we're going to go and we're going to break it down. We got four games, uh, three that we're currently going to look at, and then we'll have the fourth one that we will talk about. So what we're going to do is we're first going to have the giveaway from yesterday. If you're new to the channel or you're semi new to the channel, anytime these videos get a minimum of 50 likes, you are a subscriber and you've left a comment, you have a chance to win a free week of FTA+. Plus. If this video gets 100 likes and you've left a comment, you have a chance at a free month, 150 likes, a free year, 200 or more likes, you have a chance at a $500 lifetime pass brought to you by FantasyTeamAdvice.com. So we are going to have the giveaway. Yesterday's video had 689 views, 14 comments, 64 likes. One person didn't like the video. Now, with those many views, with only 14 comments, not a lot of people. So you have a chance. But if you want to have a chance to win, out of 64 likes, there should have been at least 64 comments for everybody. But you guys are here. We are going to see who the winner of yesterday is. Now, we will do the exact same thing every single day when the videos get at least 50 likes. If you haven't, we are going to be breaking down the NFL uh, main slate as well. So make sure you check out fantasyteamadvisors.com. Tall Tale. Email me, dfshelp1 at gmail.com. Let me know your username on the website because I do believe you have a username on the website. You have won before. You can win every single day. That is the beauty of the giveaways from FTA+. Plus. So definitely check us out. Congratulations to you, and we'll be on the lookout for a winner for tomorrow if this gets at least 50 likes. So if you have not checked out FantasyTeamAdvice.com, make sure to check us out. MLB content, we've got most of the odds there. Um, BVP batter splits and stuff like that. We're going to show you those because Outlier brings that to the table right here. So um, at the at, towards the end of the video, we are going to give you guys a... Um, pitches be crazy, which are the top five pitchers on the day that have the best matchups against teams that strike out the most. So we'll talk about that. We're not going to do simulations because playoff simulations really aren't really doing much. And as of right now, the early simulations only have one batter that is a 10 out of 10 matchup rating. So if you do sign up for FTA plus it's $10 for a week or $30 for a month, 
check us out. We'll have all of that over there. So, and also towards the end of the video, we will build a lineup similar to what we did yesterday with the pitchers we like, and we'll build it on DraftKings. So buckle up, let's get ready, and let's break down this slate. So what we're going to do is we are going to break down every game. So we've got Detroit at Houston leading off just like yesterday. And what we're going to do is we're going to go. So you go to the games, you go to the MLB and you go to the day, go to the matchup or the match details. And we're going to break it down. We're going to look at all of these. So as you can see on pitching wise, Max Freed at San Diego, Seth Lugo, Kansas City at Baltimore, Hunter Brown versus Detroit. We've got Shamanaya at Milwaukee, Joe Musgrove at Atlanta, Zach Eflin at Kansas or at versus Kansas City and Aaron Savale versus the Mets. And then we do have an opener, which is wild in a playoff game, an opener here um, in game two. But we will talk about all of that in these games right here. So Detroit at Houston does start out with an opener. And what I love is you see Hunter Brown with the backs against the wall. They have to win this game. Um, 11 and nine record uh, strikeouts per nine. 9.48, but versus Detroit, he's had a good match against Detroit. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about. We're going to look at it. So, um, his last start to tune up was, you know, eight days ago, nine days ago. 23.9 fantasy points, went six innings against Seattle with eight strikeouts. Against Detroit this year, two starts. One win, 12 innings pitched, 10 hits allowed, only one earned run, and 16 strikeouts against this team. 27.5 is the fantasy points he is averaging against them, which is which is a fantastic number, especially 8,300. Backs against the wall, I thought the Detroit bullpen was going to blow it uh, in game one. They did not. They came through. Hunter Brown in a great spot here. Now, this is my problem. When you're in an elimination game, let's say Hunter Brown base, loads the bases, maybe he's down 2 nothing or something, they're going to yank him real quick. They're not going to let him try and work out of it. Same thing with any team that's facing elimination in a three-game series. So that's the one thing where I'll tell you, be a little bit careful. Don't put all of your money into these games right now. Um, maybe stick around. Use some of that money for uh, football because you'll definitely see what we're talking about. Um, the hooks are going to be quick in these games, especially when, when Houston's on the verge of getting uh, put out to the woodshed for the, you know, off season a little bit earlier than what we're used to. But Hunter, Hunter Brown is in a fantastic spot there. So then we look at Detroit. So they're going to open up with Holton. Um, looking at his game logs, he's not gone deep, you know, 1.1 1, 1. 1. Um, against Houston, three three games pitched against him, 4.1 innings total, three strikeouts, so not much. You're not spending 6,800. You're going to have Reese Olsen, who's going to be the long relief. Now, um, splits-wise, this year he has not faced Houston. Um, home games or uh, game logs, he really hasn't done much. This is what I'm scared about. He's not shown any potential. Astros, we know, are very good when they're on, and that's kind of what I'm seeing or what I'm feeling might happen here. So we look at that, and I don't really like this one. If I were to take a pitcher in this game, it's going to be Hunter Brown. Um, but, you know, I am secret, deep down rooting for the Detroit. I think most of America is outside of people that live in Houston and Texas. Um, Hunter Brown against them. No one's had success except Kerry Carpenter does have one home run. This is what I like about Outlier. So not only do they help with sports betting, they show you breakdown. So you can see this is BVP. But then if you want to break it down a little bit more, if you look at which Detroit batters have had success against right-handed pitching, overall there are some. Kerry Carpenter, 17 home runs, batting 305. You've got Riley Green, 280 batting average, batting with 18 bombs. Matt Veerling with 13 bombs. You've got Jake Rogers, 207 batting average, 9 home runs. Colt Keith has 12 home runs. Like These numbers are great against right-handed pitching. Maybe not so much against... Hunter Brown, but against right-handed pitching this year, maybe they have the momentum of being the underdog who probably shouldn't even be in these playoffs, took the mighty giant down game one. Maybe they come out top, on top here. I like Hunter Brown, um, but be cautious. Do not get in love with only one pitcher today. So those would be the bats that I would look at in this Detroit lineup. Then we look at Houston. Tyler Holton's going to be there for one game, and then it's going to be um, Reese Olsen. Um, I'm still taking... 
Kyle Tucker. I'm still taking Altuve. Altuve batting 370 um, against left-handed pitching. Maybe he leads the game off with a home run. Uh, huge numbers there. Jordan against lefties batting 362, still doing well against right-handed as well. If you look at overall numbers for him, um, Yonner Diaz batting 299 for the entire year. Uh, you got to probably get him in there a little bit. Bregman, potentially this could be his last game uh, for Houston because he might be a free agent here. Basically just a Houston stack. I don't, in my mind, I don't see how uh, Detroit takes this game here with these two pitchers going. Um, the opener, I don't think he's going to do much. Reese Olsen really hasn't done much lately. Again, though, they could unload the, their entire bullpen as well. I could see that, but I think people are, might be off of Astros just a little bit. I'm going to go back to them today. I'm, I'm going to have them as a stack somewhere. So that really takes care of that game there. Um, yeah, uh, I would look at Hunter Brown, probably one of my favorite pitchers on the slate here compared to uh, what we've got on Detroit. Those two plus whatever bullpen guys they decide that they're going to go that day. So we'll move on to the next game. Game number two, Kansas City Royals at the Baltimore Orioles. We will take a look at them. So we have... Zach Eflin going up against Seth Lugo. Now, Seth Lugo has been uh, amazing this year. 3.01 3 ERA, 181 strikeouts, 16-9 record, 1.09 whip. Um, fantastic. On the road, we look at his splits, um, 2.62. So he has been better on the road. Again, there is some weather concern here. It might just be rainy like we saw uh, in game one, which I'm okay with pitching-wise. Uh, the wind, as of now, is blowing in. I kind of feel like it could go like what we saw yesterday. Uh, one nothing, uh, wild one nothing. There would love, to, obviously, for DFS purposes or sports betting, you you want to see more. Uh, but yeah, Seth Lugo, he faced Baltimore once this year, five point one innings, uh, did get the loss, four earned runs, one only one strikeout. So the strikeout were, was low against Baltimore. That's a little bit down there. And then the flip side of that, we've got Zach Eflin. Uh, you know. Got traded from Tampa Bay to Baltimore. 3.59 ERA, 134 strikeouts. Splits-wise, has faced Kansas City once this year. Didn't do too well. Still got the dub, but gave up six runs, five of them earned, and only three strikeouts. Um, didn't Coming off of one of his worst starts of the year against the Yankees, only went 4.2 innings to end the season, the regular season, I should say. Uh, three in runs, one home run, five walks, which was a ton. Got him in trouble, and that was it for him. So, I don't like Eflin here. Um, did get the dub in that one, but again, I do not trust him. Uh, so, we do look at Eflin. Uh, did not do well. If we look at just BVP, start off BVP, uh, you can see uh, Paul DeYoung, 417. Um Batting average against him with a home run. Sal Perez has a home run against him. Michael Massey has a home run. Um, home runs, that's it. Vinny Pascatino is back. Uh, so that that's good. So now we look at the Kansas City bats and what they've done splits-wise against right-handed pitching this year. So Paul DeYoung with 19 bombs. Uh, Adam Frazier, 206 batting average. Show a little batting average with four home runs. Probably wouldn't use him. Michael Garcia with five home runs, 233. Probably not using him. But you have Michael Massey batting 258, which is lower, but it's above league average. And he's got 12 bombs. Then Vinny Pascatino has 15 bombs. Then Bobby Witt, 336 batting average, absolutely smashed against right-handed pitching. 28 of his 32 home runs came against right-handed pitching. So those, those are great numbers. Then you see MJ Melendez, 17 bombs. Hunter Renfro. Usually we we like to see Hunter Renfro. Or, prior years Hunter Renfro smashed lefties this year it was righties he hit 230 against righties which is better so how to read this on outlier if it's green that means they hit that handed in this pitcher better um, 32 RBIs with 10 bombs as well so I don't like Eflin here um, honestly if if I'm looking I would lean a little bit towards uh, Lugo and the Royals bats over Eflin and Baltimore. We could see Baltimore uh, being out of it here. But again, you've got Baltimore coming in. Um, Zach Eflin might get the hook early because their backs are against the wall. 
I could definitely see that as well. So pay attention there. Um, but yeah, I would look at those bats. Um, if you aren't going to go Lugo and you want to go against them and you want to see Baltimore bats, you do have Westberg, who's got uh, two for two with a home run against him. Colton Cows are one for two with a home run against him. And against right-handed pitching, Baltimore, overall, obviously Gunnar Henderson batting 291 with 29 bombs. You got Ryan O'Hearn batting 264 with 15 bombs. Jordan Westberg has 13 bombs, batting 275. Kowser batting 249 with 19 home runs. Santander, 32 home runs. 32 of his 44 came against right-handed pitching. So he smashes from the left side of the plate. Cedric Mullins as well, 17 bombs, batting 245. 17 of Mullins' 18 home runs were against right-handed pitching. So those would be the bats you could look at if you are not going to go with either pitcher in this game. Completely understandable if that's the way you go. Then we've got the Mets at the Brewers. We have Sean Manaya going up against Aaron Savale. So Manaya coming in, 347 ERA. Uh, his last game, though, he did get lit up. He had a 12.27 ERA in that game. Um, overall in the year, splits-wise, he has faced Milwaukee once this year. Started the game, got the loss, only lasted 3.2 innings, six runs, five of them are earned with only one strikeout. So that's low. But Milwaukee, they do strike out the third most out of all of these playoff teams in the wild card. So we'll take it how we can get it. That's in the out, uh, that's at home. So if you do look at splits, Manaya on the road, a little bit better, slightly better, 317 ERA. So not huge, but it is slightly better. I don't mind him much, but let's take let's dig into the numbers a little bit. And take a look here. Um, and then is it confirmed going to be Aaron Savale? Trying to see if it has been confirmed or not. Give me one second. No, it's actually going to be Frankie Montas. I don't know why Savale's on here. So it's going to be Montas. Um, and one thing I do love about DraftKings, which you can't do on FanDuel, is you can search the players and you can see the ones that aren't technically labeled as starting yet. Montas here, 484 ERA. I mean, the backs are going to be against the wall. Um, yeah, I mean, Milwaukee was doing well, and then the Mets put up five in the fifth yesterday, and it was over. Um, so Montas, if he gets in trouble, that's it. He's going to get the hook early. Faced the Mets once this year, four innings pitched, two earned runs, six strikeouts. So he did well against them. But yeah, I think it was Savale had they won the first game. Um, so Montas is going to get, I mean, short leash. All the teams that have lost game one, very short leash in these games. I don't trust him. I'd rather look at the Brewers bats. Um, or uh, the Mets bats. So Mets against him. Uh, Luis Torrens, I don't know if he'll start. He's got a home run. Mark Vientos, I love Mark Vientos. We used him yesterday. Home run out of him. Lindor batting 364 against him. Against right-handed pitching. They actually kind of 50-50 on who's been good against right-handed pitching. Pete Alonso with 25 bombs batting 270 or 241. Uh, Lindor with 22 bombs batting 277 against right-handed pitching. You got Bader batting 253 with seven bombs. Um, Brandon Nimmo with 19 home runs. You got Jesse Winker who had a triple. Um to tie the game early, I think in was it first inning or, or fourth inning, or take the lead. They took the lead with his triple, leadoff triple, in that inning when he came around to score. Um, 13 home runs, batting 258. Tyrone Taylor, I don't know if he'll be in there, batting 249 with five bombs. Uh, Milwaukee, if you're going to go against Manaya and the Milwaukee bats that have had success, Eric Hossie has a home run. Reese Hoskins has a home run, but against left-handed pitching this year, uh, William Contreras batting 313 with four bombs. You got Eric Hossie. I don't know if he'll be in there, but he's got three batting 300 with three home runs. Gary Sanchez, I'm probably not using him. Jake Bowers, 242 batting average home run. Reese Hoskins with eight bombs against right-handed pitching this year, or left-handed pitching this year. Uh, Garrett Mitchell batting 273, and then you got Blake Perkins. Batting two, uh, 71 with two home runs. But do not forget, loved Bryce Terang yesterday. Had Did a pretty good in that game. Jackson Cheerio as well. Uh, I could see them balling out in this game. I don't really like the pitching um, in this matchup here. 
I'd rather go different pitching and feel more comfortable than I'm, I'm still looking at Hunter Brown. I'm still looking at Seth Lugo. Um, those would be the ones that I'd probably look at a little bit more than what I would look at um, Montas, Savale, Eflin. I don't trust them. I just do not trust them whatsoever in this game. Then we do have the final game, but it is not on Outlier yet because as I'm making this video, the game is still going on. So we are going to break it down old school like we did a couple of seasons ago. We're going to look at baseball, savant. We're going to come down here, Max Fried versus Joe Musgrove. Now, Braves strike out the second most out of all of these teams that are playing in the wild card round. Let's take a look at Max Fried at San Diego, which is a pitcher's park. Um, Splits-wise, against them this year, one, in, one start, 4.1 innings, gave up nine hits, only three earned runs, only two strikeouts. So the strikeouts were very low. Um, game log-wise, coming off a fantastic start against Kansas City, which is obviously another team um, in the playoffs. We look at that, you know, that's a fantastic start. Then a good start against Miami, and then a couple of duds in a row against the Dodgers and the Washington Nationals. You do look at splits when he is on the road. He's got a slightly worse ERA. So not huge. It's not a huge difference. But again, this is kind of what we're looking at. The Braves are a team that I just didn't think would make it into the playoffs the way they were, and they they snuck in themselves. Obviously, they've had a lot of injuries, but they're back. Um, and then you got Joe Musgrove. So Musgrove coming in 388 ERA, splits-wise has not faced Atlanta this year. Atlanta is the team that strikes out second most. When he pitches at home, he's got a 386, so it's, it is up there, but it is better than on the road. Game log-wise, decent game against the Dodgers, good game against the White Sox in San Francisco, bad game against San Francisco, great game against Detroit. Up and down, up and down for him, but he's got, honestly, not too bad there. Um, and you can kind of look at this. Max Fried against the current roster for the Padres. 104 plate appearances, 269 batting average, only a 17.3K percentage. Then on the flip side, Joe Musgrove, 92 plate appearances against this Braves team, 25K percentage, 241 batting average. So we can look in here, the batters that have had success against um, against Max Fried. So in theory, you would think Manny Machado against the lefty is good. One for 16 is a home run. That's a .063 batting average so you can see that there's only one home run against him the hits are you know up and down up and down so that it is a little bit elevated i think we're going to see vintage max freed i i kind of like him in this situation and then the flip side of this joe musgrove against the braves depending on the braves that we're looking at um ozuna six for 17 with three doubles obviously hitting very well this year jorge soler only three for 13 or three for 15 Ozzie Albies and Matt Olson both have doubles. Both did well yesterday, uh, or Matt Olson did to start the game. Uh, Travis Darno with a uh, one for six with a double, but he did hit a double yesterday in that game. Honestly, I think this could be a lower scoring game. It also it just depends if the wind shifts. This is more of a pitcher's park, um, but the bats that I would use for the Braves, Matt Olson has been coming on strong when we need him. Um, Ozzy Albies, I would look at. Marcelo Zuna has been smashing all year. He's another one I'd look at. If you want to find a couple of other ones that we might look at in here, um, Solaire could be in there. Ramon Laureano could also be in this game. Now, if we're looking at Padres bats, Jackson Merrill, I would look at. Okay. I would look at uh, Jake Cronenworth a little bit. Luis Arise, again, like we said yesterday. He's not going to hit home runs. He's he's leading off, but he's an on-base machine. So he is also one that I would look at. Um, Donovan Solano against the lefty, I don't mind. Tatis, I also don't mind. Bogarts and Profar are other ones that I think I would use a little bit as well. So the pitching is not the best in these, these games. I do like Seth Lugo. I do like Hunter Brown. I do like Musgrove because of how much the Braves do strike out uh, on the season. Uh, and then I don't mind a little bit of Manaya. 
and maybe a little bit of Freed, but I'm not using Eflin. I'm not using Montas or Savale. I'm not using Olsen or Holden. So the stacks, I do like Houston as a stack. San Diego might be a stack that we bring it back just like yesterday we did. The Mets, I, I think, are my my third favorite stack on the slate. So those would probably be the stacks that I would use today. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the... So that's the breakdown of the four games. Those are the pitchers on the slate, the projected pitchers. Savali's out. Frankie Montas is in. But again, teams that are going to be on the brink, everyone's fair game. So pitching can get a little crazy there. So maybe load up on your bats that you can. So these are pitches be crazy. The number one pitcher, according to Pitches Be Crazy, is Hunter Brown versus Detroit. Number two is Joe Musgrove versus Atlanta. Three is Shamanaya at Milwaukee. Four is uh, Frankie Montas versus the Mets, which I don't, I don't like him. And then number five is Seth Lugo at Baltimore. Now, the wind blowing at Baltimore gives a bump up to Lugo. I might put him third or fourth instead of fifth on that. So that's kind of the thought process in this game, or in these four games, breaking it down. If you have questions, let us know down below for sure. Um, we can try and build a lineup, just a, a simple one that we're looking at. So I'm looking at Lugo. I'm looking at Brown. That allows us 4,100 on the other side. William Contreras against Manaya, I do like him. He is very expensive. Yonder Diaz versus Holton and or Reese Olsen. I think I'm going to save 800 bucks and I'm going to go with Yonder Diaz here. And I'm going to keep that trend, and I, I'm going to keep that of stacking Houston a little bit too. So first base, obviously Matt Olson has starting to turn it up. I would look at him. I would look at Reese Hoskins. Obviously, Luis Arise makes a lot of sense. You go down a little bit. Um, you're not going to get anywhere here. So it's basically John Singleton and up, which I'm not going to use Singleton. Maybe a little bit of Bowers because he is cheap. It is a lefty on lefty matchup, though. Uh, you do have JD Martinez, but if you want to keep it, keep it a little froggy and stack against Manai, I'm going to go Reese Hoskins here. So we've got uh, second base we're on now. So obviously Altuve, I think he leads this game off with a home run. So I love Altuve here. Um, Bryce Terang, I don't mind him. Michael Massey a little bit too, I don't mind. So let's see if we can pay up for Altuve in this one, just to kind of go with that Houston stack. So again, you could go Bregman 4,800, Mark Vientos 4,400, so you're saving a little bit of money. Paul DeYoung, if he's in there, 3,300 will be a salary saver. Gio Urshela against Musgrove, even more, should be starting at third base. That'll save you some salary. So we're going to try to build, but if we got to come back and, and fix a little bit, I think the low end, I would like Gio Urshela as a cheap option. So let's, for instance, just go Mark Vientos for now and see what kind of lineup we can build at 3,875 combined. Now, we saw Bobby Wood Jr., um, 6,200, very expensive, but a great matchup for him. Willie Adamas against a lefty, I absolutely love. Um, Bogarts against a lefty, I don't mind. Lowest we can go, probably Bogarts or Acuna if he is in there. I don't even know if, if he is. Um, so let's see if we can build one with Bobby Wood Jr. first. I don't know if we're going to be able to because outfield's going to look a little little gross here. But we saw that Kerry Carpenter, well, we're not going to use Detroit bats because we have Houston as our pitcher. So averaging 3,100, let's see what we can find down here. Did Eloy even make the roster? Oh, wait. Did not realize Eloy Jimenez was sent to the minor leagues. Wild. Did not realize that. So cheap options that we're going to go down here. You do have Blake Perkins, okay? Splits-wise, when he's at home, he has not done well. Against the Mets, he has not done much. So it's a little cheap there. Um, Bader against Frankie Montas, or did Bader make the lineup? Okay, so Hunter Renfro, we talked about him. He's been hitting, so we'll, we'll go with Hunter Renfro. Let's see what we can do at 3,100 the rest of the way. Going to get a little crazy. Um, Chaz McCormick should be in there. Yeah, I'm going to put him in there. He's a cheap option. Now we're at 3,700 for our last outfield spot. So Jesse Winker against Frankie Montas. I had that triple yesterday. Um, Winsteel Perez. Now we're not using him because we're not using Detroit in this 
build. So let's go Jesse Winker. So we've got one, two Mets. We've got three Houston. Two Kansas City. We got Lugo and we got Brown. So that's just a, a way to build around. Just one lineup, one way to do it. Don't get uh, stuck on one pitcher because anything can happen in these lineups at any given day. So there are so, there is some weather concerns here in Baltimore. So definitely pay attention to see if that game will get played. If it does, I do like Witt and Renfro from Kansas City as well. So that's one build, one stack that we like. If you want to see more, go check out fantasyteamadvisors.com. All of the stuff under the MLB tab, we've got it there. We have a Discord that we talk back and forth. So make sure to get involved. Let's have some fun. Let's make it a great community. And be on the lookout. All the other content is out, or we're starting to build it out. So we're going to have rankings for NFL for this weekend. We're going to have a breakdown using our matchup tool uh, for the main slate from Sunday. If you guys did not check it out, we absolutely murdered it in week four. Uh, I brought Personally, I brought home 700 bucks. I'm using the matchup tool, building lineups out there, and doing the showdown. So make sure you check out the showdown videos as well as our long-form uh, main slate breakdowns as well. So that's what I've got in this video. Good luck in day two of the wildcard series. Let us know how you did yesterday. Let's bring home some bacon today. Peace.